Welcome back, and it's great to welcome him. He is an ex-soldier who went to war in Kosovo and an award-winning chart topper all over the world. His debut album, Back to Bedlam, sold 11 million copies and in 2006 was the best-selling record anywhere in the world. The hit single, You're Beautiful, was awarded the Ivan Novello Award for Most Performed Work and made James Blunt the first British artist to top the American singles chart in nearly a decade. His third album, Some Kind of Trouble, is out on November the 8th. James Blunt will join me in a moment. But first, let's take a look at his hot new single. Stay the night, and it's the magic work. James, right here. Welcome, James. Great to have you with us. It's very good to see you. Great to be together. Stay the night. Was that inspired by one particular night and one particular girl, or was it written in the middle of the day on a bus? Um, I wrote it in California um, with Steve Robson, who's produced my album, and with Ryan Tedder, who's a, a, a band in a band uh, called One Republic. And we've also credited Bob Marley as writing uh, the song as well, because I've taken a line from him. Which is the line from him? Um, it says, just like the song on my radio said, we'll share the shelter of my single bed. I see. Oh, I see. So that's how, that's how it, all, it all came about. And, uh, and in fact, I was interested in reading about the last, s since we uh, ran into each other at Tom's Kitchen yep. and so on, that it said that you had, had bef between the second and third albums, a writer's block. What does that feel like? What is it? And how did you get out of it? Yeah, I think what I um, felt is I had written two quite heavy, quite serious albums, and I wasn't really inspired to go and write a third that just repeated itself. And so although I would come to the piano and try and, and do bits and bobs, found, found, you know, found it wasn't really uh, inspiring me or doing anything. And so eventually I kind of gave up on that. And of course there is a certain nervousness that my mm. record company are going to call up and say, where's the new album? <laughs> um, and, uh, and so actually then it took a bit of time to go away and find a new way of writing. And having done that, uh, I've come back with an album which is much more upbeat and energetic and optimistic. And that's because really rather than one man and my acoustic guitar, I'm fronting a band now. Right. So that was what helped to change the, the, the mood of the piece, as it were, the serious and the thoughtful replaced by the upbeat. And do you feel, as you did this album, did you feel more upbeat yourself? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I I'm probably count myself as being an 80s child, where in the 80s we had a great sense of optimism as that, that the human race could achieve great things. And then, uh, and then since that, in the 90s and the last decade, a kind of cynicism. Um, uh, has kind of crept in in everything that we read or the way we talk about certain things. And I, um, I, in, the reason I've enjoyed this album is it kind of stems back to where I feel I've come from, th that sense of optimism, that naive, perhaps, sense mm. of optimism of, of those years or, or your teenage years where you feel that you can achieve anything. And so, yes, so it's optimistic looking forward as well as just enjoying the present. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I say, these are the songs I've always wanted to write and the kind of music I'd like to listen to. And in the meantime, you've also served in the forces. You, how long did you spend in the military? Um, six years. I was it? in the army for six years. They um, helped pay for my schooling, and so I owed them four. And uh, and I um, and I found it a really interesting experience, and so I stayed on for an extra two. Did you did you have to fight? Were you nearly killed, or what? 
Um, I was out in the Kosovo conflict, um, which obviously was, you know, a dangerous environment. It was um, during the bombing campaign, and I was a reconnaissance soldier, and therefore I'm much further forward than any of our politicians would like to admit yeah. at the time. And uh, but yeah, but I think it was a very different experience from the ones that are um, that and the British soldiers uh, are going through in Afghanistan at the moment. How dangerous was it for you? Um, th there were moments, obviously, where, where things were very dangerous. At the same time, I think um, ours is a, it's a kind of uh, limited experience in that you know, we, we, were, we had weapons and we had vehicles to look after us. I think in all these scenarios, the people who, um, who I feel much more frightened for are the civilians, because it is the civilians who, are, and you see by the numbers, that they're the ones who suffer um, and who die in, 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 these, you know, in these large numbers compared to the soldiers. I read also that you're planning possibly around Christmas to go to Afghanistan, which last time we talked about Afghanistan, you were planning to go there then. But wh what happened? You were, you were blocked on the way there or what? Um, yeah, I mean, I enjoy going to visit different places because of my experience with the army um, and to go and sing to, you know, the people who live in the country or the soldiers um, and also because of my connections with Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without yeah. Borders, again, who I think are a mind-blowing um, organization. And, and so I went back to Kosovo to go and do a small concert there and then I uh, recently tried to go to Afghanistan. But with 120 soldiers, we failed to get in because of um, difficulties in, in the supply chain, really, because the funding is not at the front line and so the aircraft were breaking down for three days. Eventually I was told I could go, uh, but getting me home they said they would uh, have to take some other soldiers off my flight so they'd lose their R&R. &R. Um, and that stage I said this is not the point of me being here. Um, so yeah, I, I plan to go out and, um, and uh, I'll go around at Christmas. Um, and again, really just to say hello to some soldiers who I know are going through those tough times. Um, but, but as they clock in to, you know, other people are there at the same time. Yes. And we went there two or three weeks ago, and um, and in fact, Kabul is much more peaceful than the rest of the country. Helmand province and so on, hugely, horribly dangerous. But uh, Kabul is is a bit more peaceful, and they feel they feel that that uh, they're beginning to get to hold the Allies of getting the a hold of the initiative. But uh, but you'll see whether that's. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's a very difficult uh, environment, and mm. and you know we, we've seen that for decades gone by, haven't we? And I think obviously uh, the message perhaps got a bit clouded when we then um, went off and diverted attention over to Iraq instead. But um, but it's, it's, as I say, it's a very tough situation, um, and someone else's country. And I hope that the people whose country it is find a bit of stability and security yeah. because I think they they probably deserve it after the the, the wars. Yeah, they certainly have gone do. On for so long. They're a brave. They're a brave people. They're a brave people, aren't they? What else, in addition to Afghanistan? I mean, you're going to do one or two of your mega tours. Are, are you a, lasting yeah. at least a year? Or uh, yeah, um, uh, if uh, hopefully even longer. Uh, my album w will come out now in uh, in a week, and then if people like it, then I hope they'll invite me out on tour. So I start in February around the UK, and then we'll be creeping out around the world from then. And do you enjoy that separation from the family and so on? But on the other hand. Terrific fun, is it? Or is it terrifically exhausting? Um, it is exhausting, but it is great, great fun. And for me, I think it's a really magical experience because you're doing music um, and, and singing it. You know, it's such, a, it's such an amazing form of communication and singing to people who can be of all different you know, religions and races, um, sex or sexuality, but they're people, you know, as human beings, they don't necessarily even understand the words behind your songs, but they still understand the emotion and they connect with that. And uh, I think that kind of C human connection with people is mind-blowing. Mm. And what about the great single so far? I mean, new one may capture, capture the first place in your heart and your life, but going back to your beautiful for a minute, that song which is tremendously associated with you, every time you hear it played or every time you get a request for it and so on, do you as some people have said, oh, not that again? Or do you actually feel it's a great song. I'm very grateful for what a success it's been, and of course I'll sing it for you. I mean, that's a lovable thing to say, but I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you feel at that moment? Yeah, I, when I put out my second album, I, I really tried to put, uh, put a kind of uh, a full stop on my first, and so I said to people, you know, can we focus on my m new album? But you know what? It's what people want to hear a lot of the time, and I'm very lucky that they should want to hear that. And so if you said, come on, play three songs of yours now, I'd play you Stay the Night, because it's my new single, and it shows you the upbeat sense of this album, and I'd play you a song called 1973, which was a worldwide hit, which I'm really proud of as a song, and I love it. But of course I'd play you You're Beautiful, because it shows you where I came from.
Bless you. Thank you very much indeed. We look forward to welcoming you back to add to that list, that magic list of three songs at your next lineup and so on. Thank Good you. luck with the tour. It's very kind. Wherever, uh, wherever uh, it leads. Absolutely. I hope to see you there. We watched the sunset from our car. We all took it in. And by the time that it was dark, you and me had something, yeah. And if this is what we've got, then what we've got is gold. We're shining bright and I want you, I want you to know. The morning's on its way. Our friends will say goodbye. There's nowhere else to go. I hope that you'll stay the night. Our thanks to James there. In a moment, a week of seismic elections in the Americas North and South. We'll focus on the one you might have read a little less about after this break.